Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 7, Lesson 6 on Ratios and Unit Rates. In the last lesson, we looked at how to represent ratios using fractions. We're going to do that a lot more today and we're also going to look at how the sort of mixed number version or the decimal version of that fraction represents what's known as a unit rate, one of the most important ideas in all of math and science. So let's get into it right away in the first exercise where we take a look at, as usual, some pizza and some kids. Exercise number one. For dinner, there are 10 slices of pizza for four kids. Letter A, express the ratio of slices to kids, write this ratio as a number in four different ways. So let's, let's do this together. I think it's really, really important. And I'm going to include, as we've talked about in the last lesson, some units, especially in the first two, right? So an unreduced fraction, right? We've got the ratio, right? The ratio of slices to kids. So there are 10 slices to four kids. Remember, when we represent a ratio as a fraction, we're going to put that first number in the numerator and that second number in the denominator. So what we've got is we've got 10 slices per four kids, all right? right? And really, at the end of the day, without the, without the slices and kids, we've just got the fraction 10 fourths, right? That, that's what we've got. You know, as a number, 10 fourths. That's simple enough. Now, of course, as a reduced fraction, we can take 10 fourths and we can divide both the 10 and the four by two, in effect, really scaling this ratio down to its simplest form. And that would then be five slices per two kids. Now again, at the end of the day, we're just talking about the fraction five halves. Now, the fraction five halves and the fraction 10 fourths are the same number. Now, as a mixed number, right, if I was gonna change five halves into a mixed number, I think to myself, well, what's five divided by two? And that's two, right? But then I have a remainder of one, so I get as a mixed number, two and a half, all right? And finally, as a decimal, right, that I could do by, you know, going to the side of my sheet and doing 10 divided by four or five divided by two, but I really should be able to just look at that and go, well, two and a half is the same as 2.5. Now, I really wanna emphasize something, because this can be very, very tricky for kids as they go through math, right? You know, the number five is sort of the number five, but 10 fourths, five halves, two and a half, and 2.5 are all the same number, right? They're just represented in different forms. And yet, these two forms are very informative to us when we take a look at letter B. So let's take a look. Using appropriate units, explain what the number you found in A represents. And notice I say the number. Right? You might be like, whoa, there's four numbers. There aren't. Every one of these numbers is the same number. So what does that really represent? Well, at the end of the day, what 2.5 represents is how many slices one kid gets. One kid, right? So each kid gets two point five slices of pizza. All right. This is what's known as a unit rate. All right. And it's really a ratio where one of the two numbers is the number one, right? Two point five slices per one kid, right? Two point five slices per one kid. Now, what's great about a unit rate is we can now answer letter C. Let's take a look. If there were 10 kids and the ratio of pizza slices to kids stayed the same, how many slices would be needed? Justify. Well, once we have a unit rate, right, 2.5 slices of pizza per one kid, then I can literally just say, all right, well, I've got 2.5 slices per kid, I'm gonna multiply that by 10, and this should be easy, because remember, right, 
When we multiply by the number 10, we can just move the decimal place one unit to the right. I don't need to do, you know, multiplication by decimals. I'm just going to, you know, take that decimal and move it one point to the right. And that's going to give me 25 slices. And let me be very clear here, right? I'm multiplying 2.5 slices per kid times 10 kids, and that's giving me 25 slices. All right? That's it. And really, at the end of the day, before we move on, this truly is what division means, right? If I have 10 slices and I divide by four kids and I get two and a half, then what I'm literally saying is, right, then each one of these things gets 2.5 of these things. Or if I take five and I divide by two, right, it still gives me two and a half slices per kid. A unit rate. How many of one thing do we have per one unit of another thing? Let's make sure we get this. All right, unit rates. When we have the ratio of A to B, the unit rate can be found by using the division A divided by B, right, which is just the fraction A over B, yes, because the equivalent between division and fractions, and it will always have units of A units per one unit of B. Let's play around with unit rates, which you've actually worked with a lot in the past, even in this course. Let's see exercise number two. For each of the following scenarios, a ratio has been indirectly given. Specify the unit rate associated with this ratio. Use proper units. All right. Now, by indirectly given, right, it's not always the case that in a problem where, like, the ratio of pizza slices to kids is blank to blank. We might just be like, yeah, at this party there were four kids and ten slices of pizza, you know. They've given you information for a ratio there, it's just been kind of indirectly given because it hasn't been stated as a ratio. All right. Now, in letter A, let's take a look. In a cage that has only spiders, the ratio of legs to spiders is 56 to 7, right? So I want a unit rate there. And let, let's take a look at how we're going to set up each one of these unit rates, right? I'm going to put down 56 legs divided by 7 spiders. Now, what I'm always, always, always then going to do when I'm converting this into a unit rate is I'm always going to do this number divided by this number. And that makes sense because that's the order of division in fractions, right? It's always the numerator divided by the denominator. And 56 divided by 7, maybe I'll write this down just to be very clear, 56 divided by 7 is 8. Now, 8 what, right? And that really is the use proper units. But the units of a ratio slash unit rate are always easy because you can always do this, 8 legs, the division sign or the fraction should be the word per, per spider. Now I suppose if we were like really good about it, what we might do is we might say 8 legs per 1 spider, but they, they never put the 1, right? It's always 8 legs per spider or, you know, 10 pounds per cubic foot, right? So the, the, the number 1 is sort of left out, if you will. That looks like 56 minus 7 from your perspective. Let's make that look a little bit more like a division symbol. All right, let's take a look at letter B. At a snack stand, Melanie paid $6.75 for three pretzels. All right? And there's really a ratio, right? The amount that Melanie paid to the amount of pretzels she got. So if we were to set this up as a ratio, right, we would say, all right, well, we have $6.75 per three pretzels. Now, I want that, though, as a unit rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 675 and I'm going to divide it by 3. Maybe I'm going to do that a little bit over on the side of my paper. Maybe I'll do it right down here. Let's do that really quick. Right? Now, some of you might be able to do that division in your head if you're kind of really thinking about it. But I'm going to just take a little bit of space for those who, who don't. So, you know, obviously 3 goes into 6 two times. You know, that leaves me 6. I subtract, get 0, 7. 3 goes into 7. 2 times, 6, subtract, gives me 1, 
3 goes into 15 five times, right? Subtract, and that leaves me with 0. So what we've got is we've got 225. Now, 225 what? Well, again, it's always going to be the units of the numerator, right? So $225 per pretzel. $225 per pretzel. Oftentimes, people will actually not put the word dollar down, but they might just put the dollar symbol right here, omit that, and have something written like that. $225 per pretzel. Now, letter B, by the way, is a very, very common example of a unit rate known as a unit price, right? And a unit price is just how much we're paying for a single amount of a quantity. A great example of that is gasoline, right? When you see something where it'll say like, ah, the cost of gasoline is $2.75 per gallon, right? Or you might go to the grocery store and you might be looking at, let's say, buying apples. And it might say, well, these apples are $1.35 per pound, right? In each one of those cases, what they're giving you is they're giving you a unit rate, right? They're giving you how much of one thing, let's say the amount of money, per one unit of another thing. Let's keep working with these unit rates. All right, so unit rates can involve fractions, especially when the rate is less than one. So that can, this can be very, very tricky, you know, when unit rates involve fractions. But let's take a look at them because it's, it's very easy as long as we keep in mind how fractions behave. Let's take a look at exercise number three. For each of the following problems, give a unit rate based on the ratio of the first quantity to the second and use appropriate units. All right, now we're gonna do a, the ratio of the first thing they give me to the second thing they give me. We're gonna end up having fractions in both cases, and then we're gonna talk about those kind of units and stuff. So let's take a look at letter A. A recipe calls for two cups of salt for every eight cups of water. All right, so we want a unit rate out of this. Now the way that I'm gonna do that, or at least initially do it, is I'm gonna write down two cups salt per eight cups water. All right, now, without the units sitting there, what I really have is just the fraction two-eighths. The first thing I should ask myself is, can two eighths be simplified in any way? Can I, can I simplify that down? And I can, right? Because I can divide both two and eight by the number two, which would then give me the fraction one fourth. So literally two divided by eight is one fourth. But one fourth what? Well, one fourth cup of salt per cup of water. And those units are extremely important. Without, without this extra stuff, the one-fourth is useless. It is. Let me be very, very clear. Sometimes there's sort of like partial understanding and sometimes, you know, getting the right numerical answer without kind of the supporting stuff along with it means that whatever you've done really isn't doing much, right? What this really tells me is that, you know, for each cup of water I'm going to use, I'm gonna use one fourth cup of salt. And that's, that's great because if I wanted to scale this up, let's say so that I had like 10 cups of water, I could just do 10 then times one fourth to figure out how many cups of salt I needed. Let's take a look at letter B. A tree is growing three feet for every five years. All right, well this one we're gonna even have to do less work on, right? Now again, we want the ratio of the first quantity three feet to the second quantity, five years. Now again, really, at the end of the day, we're just really getting at this number. And we should ask ourselves, can the fraction three-fifths be reduced? And the answer is no, it can't. Unlike two-eighths, there's really nothing we can do with the three-fifths. So our unit rate now is going to be three-fifths of a foot per year. And it's really kind of interesting because, right, 
it, it's interesting to think that, all right, if I've got three feet every five years, how much do I have every one year? Well, every one year, I have three-fifths of a foot. That's what I have, right? And it's easy. I don't, it seems like I haven't done any work on here at all, except I've taken the ratio three feet to five years, and I've changed it into three-fifths of a foot per one year. Right. And that's actually a little bit more useful because now, again, if I said, well, all right, if it was growing at this rate for 20 years, how much did it grow? I could then multiply 20 by 3 fifths and figure out the total growth in 20 years. Let's keep going. All right. A very, very important type of unit rate. Let's take a look at exercise number four. A car is traveling such that the ratio of the distance it travels in miles to the time it has tra been traveling in hours is 124 miles to 2 hours. Letter A asks us to convert this ratio into a unit rate. Use appropriate units in your answer. All right, fantastic. I'd like you to pause the video and do this now. I do want to just kind of like spoiler alert, you won't get a fraction. I mean, you, you'll start with a fraction, but then once you do the division, you'll get a nice whole nother number answer and make sure that you use proper per units in this unit rate answer. Take a moment to go ahead and do this. All right, well, let's do it. We want the ratio, right? Um, of miles to hours, so that's going to be 124 miles over 2 hours. Now I have to simplify that by taking 124 and dividing by 2. Now if you can just do that in your head, awesome, right? If you can't, you do it over on the side of your paper, right? And you'd get 62. Now the units, right? Again, the units of the numerator are miles per the units of the denominator, hour. And of course, we all know what that is, right? That's the speed of the car, right? Unless you've never been in a car, right? Then, then when you see something like this, you say, oh, right, yeah, we're going 62 miles for every hour that passes. And what's great about that is we can now answer a question like letter B, pretty easily. If the car travels for three hours at this rate, what is the distance it will travel in miles? All right, well, for the first time, I really kind of want to look at this product because really, really what we have is something like this, 62 miles per one hour times three hours. One thing that's really great about ratios and doing things like this is you can really see how the units all work out. Remember cross-canceling with fractions? You can really do it with units as well. So if I have the fraction 62 miles over one hour, and I multiply by three hours over one nothing, there's no units there, then the idea is that the hours actually cancel, and we're going to be left with units of miles. Now, I still have to do 62 times 3, right? So maybe I have to, over on the side of my paper, do a little bit of this, right? In which case, I get 186, but I'm going to now have 186 miles, right? Units and problems can really kind of help you think about what's going on, right? In this case, you know, including those units in the ratio right, before I reduced it down into a unit rate, make it then very easy to see that the unit rate is the speed of the object, miles per hour. Then when I'm actually trying to figure out how far I've gone in three hours, using those units and watching the hours cancel out so that I get three times 62 miles, giving me 186 miles, right, then it, it's easy then to kind of figure out what operation I should do because I want to have miles at the end. All right, let's keep going. Take a look at one more problem. Speed, right? That's what we were just talking about. Speed is one of the most important unit rates of all. And really, all speed is is the unit rate you get when you look at the ratio of distance to time. That's it, right? So if you take distance that you've traveled divided by the time that you've traveled, then you get the speed or how fast you've been traveling. Let's look at one more problem involving this idea. Exercise number five. 
A slow moving bug is traveling such that the distance it has moved is shown in the graph to the right. What is its speed? Express your answer using decimals and proper units. All right. Well, in order to figure out the speed, we need to simply have one pair, one pair of time and distance. Now, we can't use zero, zero. That doesn't help us at all because th then we wouldn't have gone anywhere. But we could easily use this point or we could use this point to try to figure out our speed. I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can figure that out. All right. Well, I'm going to use this particular point. All right, but it doesn't really matter which one that you use. Now at that point, what I've got is I've got in four minutes, I've traveled, or not I, but the bug has traveled 13 inches. So the bug's speed is going to be that ratio of 13 inches to four minutes. Now, 13 fourths doesn't reduce, it, doesn't reduce it all. And in fact, if I want to really figure out what the unit rate is, I've now got to do a little, little division over here and divide 13 by 4. So over here, we'll just kind of go 13 divided by 4, put a little decimal place in there. 4 goes into 13 three times. That's going to give me 12. Drop that 0 down. 4 goes into 10 two times for 8. Subtract, drop another zero down. Four goes into 25 times. Ah, there we go. Nice with a remainder of zero. So 13 inches for four minutes means 3.25 inches per minute. Now, if you chose to use the other point, the point that had 8 minutes and 26 inches, you'd get exactly the same thing. Because 26 inches over 8 minutes obviously reduces down to 13 inches for every 4 minutes. So 3.25 inches per minute, that's not very far, you know, it's like, like that far that the bug is moving every minute. But if you've ever seen like a snail or something like that move, they don't move very fast. All right, let's wrap this thing up. So today, we saw one of the most important ideas in all of math, science, economics, etc., which is the idea of a unit rate. The idea of a unit rate is very simple, right? We take a ratio, whether it's in its simplest form or not, it's irrelevant, right? And we divide the numerator by the denominator. And when we do that, we get how many units of the numerator we have per one unit of the denominator. We saw a very two very special cases of that. One is in terms of unit prices. You know, so how much do you pay per pound of flour? How much do you pay per gallon of gasoline? How much do you pay per hamburger? Right? Something like that. What we also saw, though, was the idea of speed. Right? And that's how many feet you travel per hour, or how many miles you travel per hour, or how many centimeters you travel per one minute. Right? The idea of taking the distance that something has traveled and dividing it by the amount of time that it's traveled to get the unit rate of speed. We're going to be using ratios and unit rates all throughout the rest of this unit, the next unit, and obviously also in all future math classes. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.